question 14, exercise 6C. Exercise 6C. The diagram is given here, so we don't need to draw anything, but we need to take a careful look at this diagram and see what's given. We can see the horizontal displacement from A, 42 meters. We can see the vertical displacement from A, 25 meters down. So clearly, we're going to make use of this equation, S equals UT plus half AT squared. That's for sure. So whatever they ask you in A, B, C, these equations will play its role. Now, what else we're given? It's tan alpha is um, tan alpha is five over twelve, so it's worth drawing triangle five over twelve. That's alpha hypotenuse thirteen, so sine alpha is five over thirteen, and cos alpha is twelve over. 13 because we're going to use sine and cos alpha later in our calculations g is given as 10 meters per second per second and that's worth yeah writing down as well um that's it that's it now first question part a find the value of u or the initial velocity or u is rather speed here the initial speed of the particle. Um, let's write down two equations um, describing the motion of the particle vertically and horizontally. So what do we have vertically if we are using this equation s equals ut plus half a t squared? The vertical displacement is minus 25 meters down. The initial Velocity vertically is u sine alpha t minus half g t squared. And it's our first equation. Let's try to simplify it now. Substituting the value of sine alpha minus 25 uh, 5 u t over 13 minus half g if g is 10 meters per second it's going to be 5 t squared that's it i can do anything about it leave it like this two unknowns u and t whereas t is the moment of time when the particle hits this point what else we know that the horizontal displacement of the particle at this moment of time will be 42 meters so we can write down another equation, 42 equals, now initial velocity, horizontal velocity, is going to be u cos alpha t. If we substitute cos alpha, we have 42, 12, uh, 12 ut over 13. So another equation, number 2, which has two unknowns u and t so the next task is to combine these two equations together in such a way that we can eliminate t and get the equation just in terms of u uh, let's um, rearrange the second equation to get t in terms of u so t would be 42 times 13 divided by 12u which is um, 91 over 2u. And now we can substitute this expression into our first equation for t. And let's see what we have. Uh, it's going to be minus 25 equals 5u over 13. Big u here. Multiplied by 91 over 2u. Minus 5 and 91 over 2u all squared and simplified um, the first term u is cancelled and we have 35 over 2 here minus 5 times 91 squared over 4u squared let's take this term over on the left hand side it gives us 5 
times 91 squared, 4u squared equals and uh, 35 over 2 plus 25 gives us gives us 42.5 42.5 final rearrangement for this equation to get u squared as 5 times 91 squared over 4 over 42.5 that gives us the value of u as 15.606 or 15.6 to three significant figures. To be honest, giving the answer to three significant figures doesn't make much sense because G was given to one significant figure, but yeah, this is what they have in the textbook. So let's stick to this answer. Uh, part B, we need to know, we need to find the time of flight. And we have this expression here. So we know that the time of flight is going to be 91 over 2u. As we know, the value of u now just substituted. Uh, use more than three significant figures to get it as accurate as possible, which gives us 2.92 seconds to three significant figures. But again, from my point of view, it doesn't make sense here to give it to three significant figures <coughs> if g is to one significant but here we are okay so that's the answer now finally part c we need to find the speed of the object when it's 12.4 meters above the ground again okay, let's try to make sense of you know where the object is how is it moving so what it all means yeah so 12.4 meters is somewhere here yeah so 12.4 meters above the ground um and the object is here, moving down. Um, remember that whatever equation we're going to use now, any a suvard equation, um, if in this equation the displacement appears, it should be the displacement from the starting point A. So we're not going to use 12.4 in our calculations, we have to use this displacement, which is 12.6 meters down. Yes, 12.6 plus 12.4 makes it 25 altogether. So the displacement is going to be minus 12.6 meters if we are going to use it in our calculations. And probably we will. Now, the speed, in order to find the speed, we need to know the horizontal component of the velocity and the vertical component of the velocity so that we can square them and take square root and that will give us the speed. The horizontal component of the velocity is not a problem because it stays the same. Initially, it was u cos alpha. And it will be the same at this point. Let's draw it. Yeah? So that's our the horizontal component of the velocity, and that's the vertical component of of the velocity. Now, what about the vertical component? What about the vertical component of the velocity? There are several ways of doing it. We can say find the time when the particle is here. And um, and then work out the component of the velocity using the equation, say, uh, say this one, yeah, v equals u plus a t. But in this case, we need to find the time um, when the particle is at this point. I suggest we are going to uh, use another suvant equation which is really really useful here because we know the displacement of our particle from the starting point and this equation is v squared plus v squared equals u squared plus 2a s the only thing we have to use this equation in 
vertical direction because this equation is a little bit dangerous. We can only use it in one particular direction. Mm. But we know the vertical displacement, we know the acceleration, we know the vertical component of the initial velocity, so we will be able to find the not just the square and uh, not just the vertical component of the velocity bar, it's square straight to it, and it's what we need here. So we will be able to find the square or the vertical component of the velocity at this point. At this point. Good, let's go for this. So Vy squared equals u sine alpha squared plus 2, acceleration is negative 10, and displacement is, remember, negative 12.6. Therefore, Vy squared is, um, I'm not bothered about, you know, substituting u and sine um, alpha here, I leave it as u squared sine squared alpha, and this bit gives us 252. Right, good. Now, at this point, look at this, look at this. We know the value of u, we know the value of sine alpha, we can substitute these values and get the numerical value of vy squared. We can do the same with vx, and then put it all into this equation and get the answer. But I would like to show you another way of doing it, which um, is a little bit better because it's fewer calculations. Uh, right, vx squared plus vy squared. Yeah, we need this sum. Let's write it down. So vx squared is going to be u squared cos squared alpha plus vy squared is u squared sine squared alpha plus 252. Now, look at this sum. u squared is a common factor. And once you've taken it outside, surprise, surprise, what do we have in brackets is just 1. Cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha, whatever alpha is, A is 1. So we have u squared plus 252 here. Therefore, we only need to square this number at 252 and then take square root of it to get V. So speed is the square root of this plus 252. And it gives us 22 meters per second to two significant figures.